guys, it's MC for PC here today. Um, we're going today. Uh, we're actually be doing something a little bit out of the norm. Uh, we will be doing an Ubuntu server video. Uh, although, seeing as I'm on my Windows desktop, we'll be doing this differently. And today we will be installing and opening an Apache 2 web server. Uh, if you missed that or uh, couldn't hear me, I do have a different mic, so I don't know how this sounds at the moment, but. Uh, like I said, we're going to be doing an Apache 2 web server setup and tutorial video on Ubuntu server. Uh, my current version of Ubuntu server is going to be uh, 12.04 at the time of this video. Um, as you can see down here, you can see the date that this video was made. Uh, like I said, we're going to be doing this differently than what we normally would. Uh, we're actually going to be using something a little bit different than what I'd, I'd like to. Yes, you guys saw my connection information there, but boohoo. Um, and this does change, so you guys can't do anything with that. In fact, I'll minimize that, but I guess maybe I can't minimize the whole thing. Ah, okay, maybe I can. Uh, we'll be using um, TeamViewer for our uh, actual video and proof that this is on a separate machine. As you see, I have no you know, I have no, this is not just a VM, I will actually be doing this on another physical machine uh, via two ways. Number one is going to be an SSH terminal, number two is going to be via, uh, not really VNC, but uh, via, uh, via, similar to VNC connection. Um, I have some stuff going on over here, so let me just do a quick clear. Um, right now I'm just using PuTTY for my terminal session. It's just a putty, you know. I'll actually show you guys how to configure this. Close to my session. We're gonna double click on putty. You know, launch. It's just an exe file. Um, you just go to the name of the host and the port number that the host is running. Then just click. You know, I already have this set as a default. So you just uh, go to your IP of the machine. If you don't know how to do that, you probably should be setting up a web server. Type in the IP of the machine. SSH for this particular uh, and just you know leave the port alone um, I you just save a default and you just click that load and okay um, you do have to log in as you can see my I'm logging in as my server account and password and that's just that information we'll just clear it so we have a blank terminal now one thing that I would do for you guys or that you guys really really should do is I can show you how to do this over here but get this program it's called screen um, it's a they call it a terminal multiplexer and by that I'll show you how this works I'm not gonna do a video on screen but I just wanna do a quick demonstration of screen log in over here okay screen Attack R is actually going to restore a virtual terminal. See, I can have if I if you do Control A, oh, sorry, Control A quote, Control A Shift quote. I have two servers. I have two terminals open. One of these is actually a FeedDB server. Just change back to the list, and the other one is just a plain terminal. Now, what this essentially allows you to do is I can just close out the session. And normally that feed the B server would just close, but that feed the B server or any open process in the terminal will stay open until you do a screen tech R to reattach the virtual terminal, or a or I believe it's Control A D to detach the virtual terminal. Yep, Control A D will detach the terminal. You just do a type screen tech R. It's going to reattach that virtual terminal. Um, now, how do you guys install this? Let's just you just go to the Ubuntu store, the software center, and once you go to the Ubuntu software center, open it up, type in screen. I'll, I'll show you which one it is, uh, and then we're gonna get continue moving on. This is not necessary by any means, but if you're connecting to a server via these means, it is hands down severely helpful let's just get that up out of the way drag the window over for you guys actually yeah 
Move this over here, bring out my terminal on the left side, shrink them down a little bit. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to want to get the Ubuntu server ready. So, you're going to, to do these following commands, and I will have them listed in the description. sudo now if you guys do not know uh, Ubuntu, uh, in general Ubuntu or Debian terminal, again this is a very terminal based installation tutorial so you guys should probably get to know that before you try doing it this particular way. Uh, sudo apt tech get install, actually you know, before we do an install do an update and that's just going to run and update your entire thing, um, all your stuff. It's not actually going to update, it's just going to update its lists for programs to install. And once you're in Ubuntu, in order to install the screen program, I know I'm really kind of multitasking, uh, you can just type in screen. The program itself is not called screen, I believe it's terminal multiplexer or something, but if you just type in screen, screen is the company that makes the multi, yep, see right here, terminal multiplexer with all of that, uh, something terminal emulation, this is the one you want to get. And essentially we're done with this connection for the moment, so I'll just put that aside. Like I said, I'm clearly on another mach another physical machine, I'm not doing this via uh, VM. Okay, once we have that done, I am actually really lazy and I found an article, but I just use to copy commands. Um, once we're here and you did that you're going to want to do let's minimize that sudo apt actually I'm really lazy so I'll just do up arrow sudo apt get install apache 2 hit enter I'm pretty sure it's gonna already tell me yep see new for you it's gonna go through, you're gonna have to hit Y and enter to actually install it. Um, but I do not have to do that due to the fact that I already have it installed. And then after that, sudo apt-get update, you're gonna do sudo apt-get install Apache 2, and then you're going to want to restart the Apache service, which in this case is sudo space forward slash etc forward slash init.d forward slash apache2 space restart. In this case, I will also provide a link to the article that I basically followed to set this up. Um, I'm just going to copy that, and once you're in putty, in order to paste is just right click. So you can do right click and then enter, and it's going to restart my web server. And then we're going to want to install a MySQL server. I'm going to sudo apt get install mysql tax server. In this case, again, we're just going to paste that command. It's going to, again, prompt for an update, which none are. Uh, it, the install is going to run through a bunch of different stuff. It's going to take a fair amount of time, and it's going to pop up a GUI in your terminal, and you're just going to want to type in a password. It does work with a putty session, because that's actually how I installed all this. Even though I do not actually have Ubuntu server installed, I actually have Ubuntu desktop installed. I just have it named server. And it is running on standard desktop hardware. And now once we have that done, we're going to want to do a MySQL status. So sudo forward slash etc forward slash init.d forward slash MySQL space status. Again, we're lazy. We're just going to copy, right click, paste, enter. And then it, it gives you MySQL start or running at, and then the process ID or PID or PID, however you prefer. Uh, now we need one last program, uh, sudo apt-get, uh, it's PHP 5 uh, for MySQL. Again, copy, and then we're going to paste it, but that command is sudo apt-get install PHP 5 space PHP 5 tack MySQL. Uh, again, just gonna paste that over there. Again, it's not gonna work for me because no updates. And I did this actually last night to earlier today. Um, and then we're going to want to go to this directory right here. In order to do that, actually, sorry, this directory again, lazy, copy. You have to type cd space and then paste the directory, 
and then it, I, I didn't change flying because I'm already in this directory and then you're going to want to use your favorite terminal text editor uh, you can do cat I'm pretty sure works but I'm not familiar with the cat commands I use I personally myself use nano um, you may have to do sudo apt tech get install nano I'm not actually sure if you have to yeah see okay it's already installed I'm wasn't sure if it was already a program that I had installed or not um, either way we're going to do nano space this file does not already exist so this process will create the file uh, nano space php info dot php hit enter now mine already has code uh, yours will not so you guys are just going to do highlight all this copy it come over here essentially just paste it I'm just going to delete it right away uh, because clearly I do not need it but um, yeah once you guys have that pasted in or manually typed in you know either way works just double checking yeah I'm pretty sure I'm missing a symbol there php question mark php php info yep okay that looks better somehow I deleted that uh, and then you're just going to do a control X to exit and you're going to hit yes to save changes and then hit enter to over or save the name because we did nano php info dot php and that's going to be the new name of the file and this is where you could go through and you know change the name of the file but I'm just going to leave it hit enter and it overwrite or rewrote the code uh, just to get rid of the nano on the screen I'm just going to type a clear hit enter and that clears your terminal uh, now to continue on with the process you're going to want to it, hopefully if you're doing this on this machine you already know its IP or from the remote machines IP we're going to go to 192.168.1.168 in this case I'm going to do forward slash php info dot php and this is my browser history because I and said I did this earlier today, well, not that long ago. And it may take quite some time to load. Um, mine already had it cached because I was been there recently. But essentially, if it worked correctly, you should get a page very similar to this. And that's just saying, hey, it worked. You know, this is your PHP version, all that's unimportant. It's just, it worked. Now, um, you're going, not quite done yet. Uh, it is successfully installed, but. We're just going to do a test file just to make sure. Uh, create a new file. So we're still in the www. or the www directory in var. We're going to want to do nano or your preferred terminal editor. Um, db test. Mine's going to be two just so I can show you guys how to do this. Dot php. Hit enter. Nano opens. And then, like I said, just copy and paste. Just do make everything easy. Um, I'm actually going to change this and I'll show you guys the original as well. Oh no. Darn, I forgot about that. I forgot highlighting is copying something. It's not actually editing it. Yeah, we can do this like a boss. Look at that. Now just to show you guys that this isn't just spoofed, that this actually will work. Um, and this is the original code, so you can tell that's not what it should be. Uh, and then to save it, I just want to do control X. Um, and then you go on hit Y. And then again, this is the name of the file. We just want to hit enter. And then just do a quick clear to get that off their screen. Do an ls is just going to list all the files. See db test2, db test php index, and all that one fun stuff. So let's go up here. Um, 192.168, db test, db test2. And see, look at this. Oh, okay. 
Uh, my bad. I had missed something in the nano DB test. When you create MySQL and you added a password, you actually have to fill in that password here. Um, I'm going to pause and type in my password and save it, but you know what? I'll just uh, blur it out for you guys, but you guys do need to put this in here. Your password does need to match your MySQL password. Oh, and tip, if you're using PuTTY, the number pad does not work. So, let's do that. Let's do a quick, oh, do not enter. I want to do that. Save, enter, clear that. Okay. And now let's just type our page again. And yeah, okay. See? Yeah, we can do this like a boss. And everything's there. And it's just proving that it works. Play my music. <laughs> Actually, no, you guys can hear that. Alright, I'll just have to edit that out again. Whatever. Yes, we can do this like a boss. Alright. Uh, other than that, it, it, that's all I really want to show you guys. Uh, you should have a hopefully working MySQL. Uh, MySQL server and a PHP server, or sorry, web based. Blah, blah, blah. A web server running Apache 2 for the web server. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in. This is MC for PC bringing to you another Ubuntu video.